Paula Martin, thanks for coming in and speaking to Central Coast Newspapers. It's Budget Week and uh, you must have been uh, watching the detail of budget to do with our regional businesses. How do you think, how do you think it went in the particular sectors? Look, we think that the, the budget was a steady-as-you-go budget. It's obvious this budget um, is sign signalling the conclusion of a pandemic uh, supported type of fiscal situation. So we're really starting to see now programs and initiatives that are about recovery and that are about building our nation for future economic or disruptive shocks to, to our region. For the Central Coast in particular, we did see um, quite a significance on infrastructure spend and infrastructure projects like the widening of the Pacific Highway up in the uh, Wyong area, the investment into Wyong, the $1 billion infrastructure investment expansion of, uh, to create a faster rail scenario for our region. This is critically important for our region because we have a highly mobile community. We have 44,000 commuters that reside on the central coast and that rely on rail transport to take them into the city region. So anything that shortens the time frame for these workers to go into the city and back improves our overall health and wellbeing and allows them to spend more time in the central coast. One of the benefits of the pandemic, if there was a benefit, is that we saw our town centres rise in revenue. And that's because we had our locals staying, working from home, spending in our local cafe shops, uh, spending in our local retail. We saw the benefit of our people being here, which leads me to some other important initiatives that came out of the budget for our local region, which was the extension of the apprenticeship rebate scheme. This has been critically important to assist small businesses to provide jobs and uh, career pathways for our young. We are suffering from a very acute labour shortage situation across the Central Coast, enabling career pathways for our young people right across the board through this rebate system helps small businesses with their operating models and their operating costs. What we want to see though, is to see this apprenticeship uh, rebate program extend as long as possible. The, the extension is welcome, but we want it to go further because it is going to take a good number of years for this region to recover from the last two years of disruption. The other thing that we like out of the budget is the 20% rebate on investments into digital infrastructure for small business. So we saw the acceleration of technology usage throughout the last two years when we had that constant disruption for businesses. We now can focus on investing quite seriously in the digital enablement and sophistication of our businesses through this rebate system, which will be vitally important as we continue to experience geopolitical tensions globally, as we are experiencing the supply chain impacts from the impact of the Ukraine war. And we've obviously got very strong supply chain challenges right across the board. So being able to communicate and service our customer needs through advanced digital technologies and having a rebate system that helps small business in particular to be able to build their maturity is an absolutely welcome move. Other measures um, in the budget that, uh, that, that may be wanting, have you identified any um, opportunities in the upcoming election campaign? where the parties can battle it out and perhaps put some, uh, put some other suggestions together? Well, it was evident that the budget talked about uh, and was really focused on reducing the cost of living for our everyday locals. And that's great for our local towns because it means that more money in our pocket means that we can spend locally and I encourage everybody to get back out there and revisit all of their towns, especially our CBD. But with our CBD being Gosford, there is an opportunity with the upcoming election to seriously focus on the reinvigoration of our CBD. And that's going to need all levels of government working together to reinvigorate our waterfront, to reinvigorate our nighttime economy, to provide an environment in our global CBD that encourages businesses to invest and to, to expand their operations so that we can encourage more jobs locally, create more jobs locally. So the three things that I think we have an opportunity with the upcoming election are to really focus on how we can reinvigorate our CBD to encourage more jobs growth. We've got a very severe labour shortage situation happening here 
on the Central Coast and no industry has been untouched by this, including our industries that we normally rely on to tick over with lots of jobs like our food producers, our advanced manufacturers, but nobody has been left, um, want, oh, sorry, all industries are wanting for labour shortages by creating um, programs and investment opportunities for businesses to expand and to grow and to break down the red tape that we're currently seeing around planning, around um, developments, right across the three levels of government that will help us with our labour shortage situation, as well as being more serious about skilled migration. We are suffering from the lack of uh, skilled migration that is coming into this nation. The Central Coast benefits at a tourism level, at a hospitality level, at a manufacturing level, some more um, serious programs that look at ways to extend skilled migration, but also not to lose the investment in skilling our own locals to be able to fulfil the jobs that are going on uh, going uh, on offer at the moment. So to give you an idea, prior to the pandemic, we had jobs available around the 800 to 900 level. We now have jobs available around the 1800 level. And that's our tourism and our hospitality, missing out on those seasonal workers, even the agricultural part of the Central Coast, up on the hill in Mangrove Mountain, they are needing those seasonal workers to come through and help them to be able to fulfill their, their seasonal needs. So that's one area, labour shortage. The other area that we need to seriously look at is our housing shortages. We have around a 0.02% availability of housing shortages across the Central Coast. So it is very difficult for our local businesses to, to invest, to grow, to expand, if their people have nowhere to live. And we also need to be very conscious that the further we push our locals away outside of the region because of house prices and rental availability, the more impact that again has on health and wellbeing of our locals. So that's an area that we could really seriously focus on for the Central Coast. And the third area, which I've already talked about, is skilled migration. Good. Well, I think that's it. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, sorry, the last area that I think we've got an opportunity to really focus on in terms of investment for the Central Coast is we are a tourism economy. So continued programs to encourage tourism activity, events activity, uh, arts and festivals in this region will go a long way to pick up those industries that have been on their knees for the last two years. It is going to take some time for people to come to our shores and have holidays here. So encouraging and boosting tourism and hospitality experiences locally is something that we seriously need to take note of as we enter into a new opportunity of an election.